kind sure. of thing. This so, thing. so uh, the new drug, uh, uh, what's called Mastort, the drug claim that we're exploring right now is called Taxotary. Uh, and uh, when I first talked to Ben about it, his first reaction was actually the same as my reaction. Um, and and so let me tell you, you know, the 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 broad brushstrokes, and then I'll tell you, you know, I'll, and I think I'll give you reasons why you'll think it's uh, it really is a case. Um, so. The, the Taxotary is a chemotherapy drug. There's many, many chemotherapy drugs out there. If you don't know what chemotherapy is uh, out there in Radioland, chemotherapy is basically a treatment by drugs, so it's systemic. It goes throughout your whole system uh, of what's called cytotoxins, which means the, that it's uh, toxic to cellular life. Uh, and chemotherapy drugs particularly target the cells uh, that are rapidly growing, so rapidly reproducing cells, of which cancer is, you know, obviously one of the dangerous types of rapidly growing cells. It kills them, and that's what chemotherapy is all about. But it's systemic, so it can it can affect other of your rapidly growing cells in the body, which uh, primarily include things like your intestinal lining, I believe the lining of your mouth, as well as what is necessary uh, for hair growth, which is why most chemotherapy drugs, while you're on them, cause you to go bald. You, you know, you're familiar with that, I'm sure, Steve. So, in ter- not baldness, obviously, we are both no, are we're familiar both familiar with that. With that. Uh, yeah, join but, the club, uh, I'm lucky my hands you know, haven't fallen But that's why, that's why when you see someone who's bald and, you know, uh, people have, you know, put the bandanas on their heads and it's clear that they're, you know, too young to be totally bald like that because it affects even eye, even eyebrows and things like that, that, you know, that you know, you recognize that as that must be someone who's undergoing cancer treatment. So that's from the chemotherapy drugs because it affects those fast-growing cells. Now, what Taxotary is all about as a, as a potential case that is now essentially being pursued by, you know, by, uh, by lawyers and we're investigating it and we're uh, looking to, uh, uh, you know, to represent people in Taxotary is that with Taxotary as a chemotherapy drug, the hair loss is permanent or I shouldn't say it's not 100% for everybody but there's a significant number of people that uh, the hair loss is permanent. Now, Ben's... Oh, I'll, I'll tell him my reaction. Okay, I came into Jeremy's office today and I said, I said, you are embarrassing us. I said, let me get this right. You're dying of cancer and your big complaint is this drug saved my life but I'm bald now? Who cares? And people should stop being crybabies. This makes lawyers look like scumbags who only care about the money. I, I don't want any part of this. Yeah. That, that was his initial reaction. And then I started to tell him some of the other facts. Okay, so here are some of the other facts. Number one, uh, cancer mortality rates. You know, we always think of cancer as a death sentence because it's so scary, yeah. but it really isn't. Um, Taxotary, for example, is prescribed to a lot of women who, are, who, who, cat, who catch breast cancer very early. So, you know, the survival rate on breast cancer, you know, is, is actually quite high. Uh, the, the mortality rate is only 10.8%. That's, uh, you know, the mortality rate of breast cancer is 10.8%, which means uh, 90.2% of, peop- of, of women that get diagnosed with breast cancer get past it and get through it. I so did you, not know that. Yeah. That figure. So, and, and, and there's many other cancers with ver- prostate cancer only has a 0.8% <laughs> mortality rate. Uh, colon cancer has a 35% mortality rate. So my, my, my point, and this is the five year mortality rate. So after five years, you know, you're still alive, which generally means your cancer's gone or in remission or whatever. So my point is just because, you know, you throw out the word cancer doesn't mean as, as Ben's initial reaction, these people are dying and they're going to complain that they lost their hair. No, these people aren't dying. They had a disease which was treated and now they're fine. But by the way, you now have no hair, which for guys, maybe not so big of a deal, but for women, that's a real big deal. You can have a 35 year old young lady, maybe she's married, maybe she's not yet, and she gets an early detection of brain cancer and is given tax- breast cancer. Or breast cancer, I mean, and is given uh, taxitary and is now uh, completely bald for the rest of her life and has to wear wigs and suffer that embarrassment and all, for but the rest again, of her entire devil's life. Devil's advocate here. I mean, again, no, if it saves your life, your life, what's so? Okay, but listen. Would you rather right. wear no, wigs no, 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 no. or die? All right, all right. That's what I said. If, if taxitary was the only <laughs> thing God, that was the only chemotherapy drug out there, I would totally agree with you. 
But there are other drugs equally as effective okay. that do that the hair loss is not permanent. Most chemotherapy drugs out there, the hair loss is not permanent. Right. Okay, so you either given this or given that. And here's where the real case but lies. Does this stuff work better than No. No. And here's where the real case lies. There was a medical study submitted to the uh, to the medical journal, and I'll give you the name of it, so I'm not uh, saying it wrong, the Annals of Oncology, which is a European medical journal. You can find this on OxfordJournals.com. Uh, and what does Oxford know about? Yeah, what does Oxford know? Um, and this medical journal yeah, was I submitted. Went to Michigan State. Submitted it's into. Hell out of Oxford. Sure it does. Sure yeah. it does. You keep thinking that little man. I was a bar scholar. They have the Rhodes Scholar at Oxford. I was a bar scholar at Michigan State. B-A-R. You yes, drank exactly. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Submitted in 2011 and published in February of 2012 after it was reviewed for scientific, you know, basically for, uh, you know, that, that, that it was uh, properly done, the study was properly done, all those kind of things that, get, that happen before medical reviews get published or medical studies get published. And in this study in 2012, it found that yes, this drug causes severe and permanent alopecia, which means hair loss, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, in fact, one of the people in the study, um, just so you could say, that, well, it's just a person issue, not a drug issue. One of these people had the other types of chemotherapy and their hair grew back. And then they had, and then they tried this chemotherapy the hair loss was permanent, etc. So there's definitely in 2012 published medical literature saying that taxitary, uh, the taxitary drug can cause permanent hair loss. Okay, so now guess what the company does? The company starts warning about the possibility of hair loss, um, warnings on the drug in Europe and in Canada. And in the United States doesn't put any warning on it. And only at the end of last year do they start putting the hair loss warning on the U.S. drug? So why? Why, Steve? Do they wait three years after they know that this stuff causes permanent hair loss? Do they start telling American women and families, hey, by the way, if you're going to choose one chemotherapy drug or another, or telling doctors, if you're going to choose one chemotherapy drug or another here in the United States, um, you should know that ours, uh, the hair loss might be permanent, okay? So that's a, that's a risk. Um, I believe the company, well, that's a good question. I don't want to give you bad information. I, I know what I think it is. Um, but uh, it's Pfizer. No, it's, uh, that's what I thought. It's Sanofi. So uh, Sanofi is a major drug company. I didn't want to say it until I verified it. But yes, it's Sanofi. Uh, Stay on mic, please. So, oh, sorry. Sanofi Aventis is the company, the taxitary company. So, you know, when you start learn, when you start digging in, okay, there's other drugs that are equally effective. And they knew that it caused hair loss to be permanent, and plenty of you know ninety plus percent of breast cancer you know uh, uh, people, women that are diagnosed with breast cancer survive just fine and keep on living their lives. And this is a drug that's given to a lot of those women, and they're not warned about the fact that their hair loss might be permanent, and they could pick another, and their doctors could pick another uh, drug that uh, that doesn't have that permanent hair loss risk. Um, you got to ask yourself, why do you think the drug company, you know, didn't warn? It seems really slimy when you put it that way, and you're a good lawyer, so you can make something which, you know, seems slimy even when it may, may not be good for you. No, but no, seriously, um, I guess my other issue that I had with it is, is that if you, ha if you take a drug and it saves your life, or, or it puts your cancer remission, however you want to frame it, and you lose your hair, that's unpleasant, especially as a woman, but what's that really worth? I mean, if you're mangled in a car crash and you have to spend the rest of your life in a wheelchair, I mean, you can quantify that. But if you have to wear a wig the rest of your life and you're, and you're uncomfortable and, and emotional about it, uh, that to me seems like a problem. But, yeah, you, you uh, I mean, people don't know women at all if they don't think that, hey, you're going to be bald, including your eyebrows, for the rest of your life and not think that that's not going to cause them a lifetime. I'm not saying it's not a emotional loss. distress, grief, I just anxiety think it, of social situations. I mean, you, can you, you imagine that, know. Steve? I'm sorry, I was looking for that thing with the pen. I'm Way sorry. to pay attention. Way yeah. to pay attention. No, it's fine. I, I guess I, we're, we're like like Jeremy said, we're investigating it and exploring it. The the company I think was trying to make money off other people's misery because that's what they do. 
I just don't know how to value that. I mean, what's the value of to, a, to let's say what's the value to a thirty-five-year-old young lady, a forty-five-year-old oh, young course, lady, but being bald for the rest of her life? If she had another choice and the company pushed this drug just so they could make a few extra bucks, and you got to have a lifetime of baldness. And I, once I again, I agree with Ben. We're, wow, we're, we're I don't know. I don't show. know what that means. It's getting scary. No, no. What does that mean? You don't think it's a big deal, or you think it is a big deal? Uh, I think that if okay, if this company, as you said, you know, they didn't put the uh, warnings or tell anyone about this, and the other drugs are just as effective, then they should be uh, spanked. Yeah, I agree. And I think that'll be the that'll be the, the real test here. Is can I mean saying they're just as effective? would obviously be the issue. Proving that is, I think, is the real key here. If they, if there really is a genuine choice between two drugs, both of which will save your life, and one of which the company gets to make an extra nickel by making you suffer, well, then take them to spank town. We'll have to see. <laughs> well, it, it seems like a slippery, slippery slope for a, a lawyer. It does, doesn't it? Well, it's definitely, you know, look, I had the same reaction when I first heard the, you know, you know, because I go to conferences. Ben and I go to conferences. We talk to you know mass tort lawyers that do what we do in terms of going after pharmaceutical companies. And so when something new comes out, you know, my first question: Okay, what's you know what's new, everybody? And we all talk to each other. And someone says, Oh, well, you know this, uh, you know this taxatory is a new thing. You know, lawyers are starting to look into it. And I say, Okay, well, what what's that for? Well, it's a cancer drug. What does it do? It makes you bald. Uh, you know, potentially uh, potentially makes you bald permanently. It's like I have the same reaction. Like, okay, that doesn't seem like such a bad thing for oh, someone you're, who's you're being for, for someone who's being cured from cancer. But then you start digging deeper. You know what? What excuse is there for the company to not warn and I give agree. people the choice? That I agree with you. Have to give people choice. the choice, like and especially they do it. You said what in Canada and Europe or something? They, but war- they, they started they warning their. Er- well, they started their warnings earlier in Canada and Europe, but and not the United States. But they I finally mean, did it here. Yeah, after three uh, years or something. Well, in yeah, at the end of last year. So okay, three years I, I after wanna, the study. I want to get the 